Hi, Carol here, a warm welcome to my craft room. Well, today, finally, I'm creating a six and a half by six and a half card. I'm going to use deco foil transfer gel, the four ounce jar, and you're going to find that it has many, many possibilities of use just out of that little jar and so many ideas that will come to your mind that you can use not only to foil your projects through stenciling, but as we go along in this video, you will see there's much more that can be done with this gel and with the idea of foiling. So I'm gonna set up my mink here and get it warmed up. I took out some of the plastic tools that I like to use. I like to use that one um, with the slant on it and I'm really speeding it up because this was 18 hours of work last week and I'm trying to get it down to a reasonable time for you. As you can see I'm using a generous portion in this We Are Memory Keepers deep pocket embossing folder. I love these and I'm going back and forth like horizontal vertical to make sure I get a lot of the gel. So the Ocean Wave um, embossing folder I'm using and this wonderful floral one I really like. So I'm pressing it in there and then I'm going to set a piece of black card stock in the Ocean Wave embossing folder and I'm going to put white inside here. And then I'm taking this long ruler. This is the fuse tool, the 12 inch fuse tool. I have it right by my side so I saw it and I thought it would be great for scraping alongside the deep embossing folder. I like using the inexpensive um, tools like the um, plastic knives there and other than the metal because the metal isn't as pliable as I would like. It's always a personal choice with the palette knives whether you like to have firm grip with the metal ones but I really do like the plastic ones that come at Michael's in a pack and it has all different shapes for all different um, you know areas that you need to put paste in such as these folders and my transfer gel. So what I did is I took my magnet plate and just one of the acrylic plates. That's what I'm trying to show you there. And so it's the magnetic platform. Then I put the wonderful We Are Memory Keepers embossing folder. Look at that. All of that gel transferred onto the cardstock and then over top I put the acrylic plate and ran it through the vagabond. Turned out perfect. Now I'm going to wash everything up and this piece here were the flower We Are Memory Keepers and I put the medium on there. Look at <laughs> Boy am I ever skimping on that aren't I? But you know you don't want to be wasteful and you may need that little bit the next time you're wanting to use the deco foil gel. Now, I'm going to, throughout this video, I know this is a long video, I know that, but I did a four-sided card so that I could show you, look up close, look at the crackling you get. Oh, this card, I'm going to show you using that, my next tutorial, you're going to love it. And this one is what we're going to use today, and I think you are going to be super duper amazed at what this transfer gel can do. So I, you need to leave it for a couple hours to dry naturally. I tried it with the heat tool and honestly, you just want to let it dry on its own. You get the best results. So this white one, it had the crackles. All, I, I'm not even going to talk about it because I get just so worked up because it's so beautiful. So let's cut up some foils. That's the next thing I'm going to do. I took out the red and the blue and this opal kind, put stacked them up, and then I folded them in, you know, as small as I could get it and <laughs> started cutting. But there's something about foils and the air. This static, these pieces were going every which way. I'm not kidding. So when I got enough of them down into my little bowl here, the little dish, I started doing the cut it inside because it was really like the static was sending it almost two feet. It, 
over. So you want to have a deep bowl when you do this. And then I did the old scissor cut. I'm giving it a trim. It's like the finger workout on my chubby little fingers. <laughs> Stubby, not chubby. So in order to clean it, of course, the press and seal, just put it down like this and you will get the majority of them picked up. And the press and seal, we're going to include that in this project as well. So I grabbed some gold foil. Of course, you have to have gold in here. And I just wanted it to have this mixture. And honestly, as I was doing this project all week, I knew I wanted to do four sides of this vintage card, six and a half by six and a half. And I wanted each side to show a different technique and way of using the transfer gel. So we put this, um, it almost looks like tree bark, but I think it's ocean waves. We put the gel right onto the uh, We Are Memory Keepers embossing folder. And now look at that. We're just going to spread all these chopped up pieces. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to heat up my mink on number four. I don't uh, really go on five with the mink. I find four is just the perfect size. And I cut this down so it was just the size of this uh, folder because if I couldn't get all of the pieces parts out, I didn't want to waste a whole, you know, I think they're 12 by 12 sheets. And I do have lots of them because every time you buy your foil, they add um, the folding part there that you see going through my mink. So now I'm thinking, I wonder how this is going to turn out. <laughs> Aren't you? I only want the guts of all the foil to be transferred down. So it's a little bit of mess. Yes, it's okay. I just took my fingertips to see how much of this would stay on and how much of it would be all over my craft room. <laughs> so I have this, uh, it's kind of like... A credit card in. It's basic gray. It's from basic gray. On one end it has this rolling ball and on the other end it has this beautiful flat portion on the black. So if you, I'll try to remember to leave a link for you because this tool has come in handy so many times. It's like having a credit card scraper, you know. So I keep that on hand and um, yeah, instead I thought, okay, this is going to take forever. <laughs> I'm probably talking to myself. Let's just fold this Ken Oliver mat because it's sticky itself. Put as much into my garbage bin as possible. And then I went and put it in my large sink. And it just, you know, the water, it really did come off easily. So now I want to have the emboss back on the heart. So I do have to put it back into the folder to make sure because it ran through the um, sorry about that it's an email coming through uh, I wanted to run it back in this because we put it through the mink and it flattened out the heart section and I wanted that bump to be there S here I'm trying not to say so can like so so <laughs> those ticks that you have when you're well I don't have ticks let me see can we use another word than that those bad habits in our speech you know can catch up with us so here I guess I'm checking that email that just came through <laughs> and uh, so I put gold oh yes it's getting hot in here now because I'm wondering what I'm gonna do so coca-cola to the rescue and uh, those that don't drink pop I apologize I know that I do like my can of coca-cola nice and ice cold yummy I have one right by my side actually so I go around the hearts and I found my number two black velvet brush so now I have the two four six eight twelve I skipped the ten and I found it in here with my good brushes I have a I knew I had one that was a more inexpensive brush I wanted to use on this because I'm going to use liquid um, Versamark that you buy in the bottle. I put it in that little wee container with the lid and I'm going to use an old paintbrush 
and we are going to go around and because the hearts are raised I can literally just draw a heart over top with the Versamark. Then I'm going to heat set it because I don't want to lose the emboss on this. I'm going down the last two rows here with the liquid Versamark. I love having that on hand. It's inexpensive and you can do so many things with the liquid where you don't have to press down with the Versamark pad. And this is one of the instances. I want to keep those hearts raised up and look at that. And then I thought, oh, I missed a little bit. So instead of adding more of the liquid, I just grabbed one of the daubers and went over the top lightly with the Versamark pad. But this is what's funny. I grabbed the gold embossing powder it wasn't the mixture, so a couple of the hearts are pure gold. Pure gold. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? But watch the color, how different it is from the black and the gold mixed together. You know, it doesn't make any difference because this is going to be a shaker. So I'm cutting it down just to kind of look nice because I didn't have a clue what I was going to do here until later on. So I thought, okay, I'll cut the outside of it off and uh, I don't know if I'm going to use it as a frame yet or as a heart shaker. So I just set the little pieces parts and now I'm going through some of my Spellbinder dies to see if I would be inspired when I looked at something and there I found the tags. I'm going to use those and I just hauled out, look at me go, a ton of inspiration. I picked out my um, my image for the transfer gel on the other side. This is the deboss side. I picked out a stencil, and I think you're really going to like it. It's a Prima stencil. I'm just going over there into my big container and going through it, rummaging. You know, on my last video, I showed you how I rummaged through my stencils. And I found this Prima stencil with the two birds and the beautiful limbs and leaves. Such a pretty stencil. I really love this one. So uh, anyway, I'm back. <laughs> it's Saturday. Can you believe it? I don't know where time's going on this voiceover. I just ran out and did groceries. The worst thing I like to do. But I ran out and now I'm back. I had Hunter overnight. So that uh, stopped me from doing the voiceover yesterday. I just want my friends to know why it's taken so long to get this tutorial up. It seems like every day I end up with more to do. They always say after you retire, uh, you're busier. And I think that's true. And uh, anyway, let's move on. So I put it over top of the stencil. I grabbed one of my um, knives there, the plastic knives and I'm going to liberally put that uh, transfer gel on there and I just think it's wonderful because it seeps down into those hearts that are um, concave like at the deboss and wait till you see this I mean I know this gel is made to foil if you don't have laser jet printer you know it, it allows you to instead of having the laser black cardstock to run through with dies. Now you can use a lot of elements to create with foil. But I'm going to show you it's more than foil that you can create with this gel. It has so many properties in it that uh, make it wonderful. So you can see I'm not really scraping it accurately so that it's all level. I'm just making sure I get some in there. And I'm once again trying to rush it <laughs> then I thought well what if I put the heat on the opposite side you know and maybe that will help it along but it doesn't you know it's the old thing you do have to wait and let it just set it aside for a couple hours and let it naturally dry so I had to pick out my paper choices for my six and a half by six and a half inch card so I went to my stash and I got these little gorgeous uh, the stamp sets come with the papers which are I think it's eight by eight and it's like 40 sheets you get a ton of paper so economical and you can cut from all of these goodies the pictures in there so because they were eight by eight 
and my card is six and a half by six and a half. I did have to, um, I didn't want to waste, you know, 12 by 12 cards. And these colors for vintage cards, I love vintage, you know that. I just love mixed media element. And uh, so I thought I'm going to go with the creams right here. This is my card base. So, I, you know, because of the size, I have to make my own. So you just cut it, leave a, about a half an inch on the top, score it, put some double-sided tape on, and you have yourself your own base, card base, for whatever you're going to work with. And if you're not uh, comfortable with more of a mixed-media style card, I can tell you that it eliminates stress of getting anything dirty on your white cardstock. <laughs> I struggle with that to do clean and simple cards, but when you do these style cards, you just add stuff to it, like papers and inks and yada yada, and you don't really worry about the the stage of keeping everything so immaculately clean. Now on this page, I have to be careful because it does have print on it. So I want the print to be the right side up. And then I wanted to use both sides of this card. Isn't that nice? I'm going to use this as tags. So I got out these beautiful dice tags and I'm going to cut them off here. So I started out thinking, okay, how many tags can I get with this? You know, even putting some in the centers, you know, where the, the gut parts are, you know. And I had some ideas there, and then I thought, I don't want to waste this cardstock from making my card base. So I'm going to lay that out, then I'm going to put down my tags, and I'm going to use the center pieces as well, as much as I can get on there. That's what I'm going to try. And I love doing it this way as well, because you get the outside borders. Sorry, I just, I don't know, I quickly grabbed for something. And uh, it's a new day. I can see that my nail polish is different. My jewels are different and so, are, so is my clothing. <laughs> I'm probably on day number nine because I work every day uh, in my craft room doing a card, as you know. But really, really, if you want to, you know, think about this, it's four cards in one. I'm doing every side of this six and a half by six and a half inch card. So it's like four cards if you're, you know, if you're thinking about time, there you go. I'm showing you close up there as I speed it up. I don't know how I'm going to get this 18 hour video down to less than an hour, but I'm trying here. Um, I took all of the pieces parts out and made as many tags or banners. That's what you call them, not tags, they're banners. I made as many as I could with the cardstock and the sizes that I had. I love this kind of newspaper print, that chocolate newspaper print. See, I'm getting all the using up all the paper. And I had out, there's my and. Oh, I've got to try it out. There's the wonderful emboss and deboss. So I thought, okay, in order to do this, I'm going to make another shaker. Yes. But what's really funny, when we get going here, <laughs> uh, to make the shaker, when you open up the card, your heart's going to be upside down, right? But I'm going to remedy that too. I'm going to show you how you can make something beautiful out of an upside down heart. Yes, that's why I take my time when I create. I'm in no hurry. I know I like to get a lot of videos out there for you. And I'm really going to try to get more one-sided cards up. Because when I do a four-sided card, it just seems like days and days, doesn't it? And uh, I, I'm trying to get a bit of the tape that was left on there. But uh, yeah, that's the micro micropore tape. So once I get that up, I mean, isn't this silly? Why do you worry about that if I'm having shaker bits in there? <laughs> look at me, look at it. <laughs> Like it's some big deal. I just talked to you about not worrying about little pieces and dirt and this and that on your cards. And yeah, I'm studying it out. Okay, should I throw that piece out or should I use the little hearts in there? And I started cutting and then I said, no, forget it. Because it was peeling up. See that? So that piece went into the garbage right beside me. And look at that beautiful heart. You've got the deboss and the emboss. 
Yes. And the colors went perfect. And the background having the gold, silver, blue, and red foils that we chopped up. And then, of course, actually, I'm drinking some chocolate milk. Both of them are good. Coca-Cola or chocolate milk. It's full of sugar. But, you know, I guess that I'm soon to be 64 years old. I can enjoy some of these little life's pleasures, right? And I just got back from shopping and I always get a, a quart of chocolate milk. And then I get my glass out of the freezer and I put a nice cube in it and I sit down and enjoy it thoroughly as I'm doing a voiceover. Mm -hmm. So now we need to do some scoring. So I took out my small scoreboard and uh, I'm looking at it here wondering, okay, Kara, what are you gonna do? Yeah. So just grab my stylus and let's make the lines. I need a gusset, right? Because I'm going to put layers on the inside. So when you're gonna layer up any card, just slide over one or two um, lines. You know, I'm going, I'm only going to do two, two lines. So uh, one is to fold over and the other one is to make that wonderful space I need in between there, some breathing room, so to speak. Once I get that creased nicely, I'm going to take that beautiful gold rose, um, I call it tear tape, sticky tape, it's not, washi tape, that's it, washi tape. Oh yeah, after a day, you know, after a couple hours at Walmart, I'm telling you, I'm just exhausted. It was so busy on today for some reason. But anyway, I'm going to go over both sides. Now, this card, you're going to open and close, open and close, open and close during the uh, creation of it. So I am going, oh, sorry, there's my big head again. I'm going to, oh, look at that. That's my next project. Wait till you see, oh yes, that little zebra don't even look at it okay pretend it's not there I actually use my sewing machine too for that project wait till you see what the transfer gel does for animal fur you're gonna be shocked but you're not gonna be shocked now because that's my next card I have to get the edit and voiceover done for that as soon as I'm finished here so I do have projects ready to go up so I am going to put down my Nouveau glue. You can use any glue. Run it underneath where your washi tape is going to go. And I love this washi tape with the roses. It really is stunning to look at. <laughs> and I wish, yeah, put it away. I'm trying to, what are you doing, Carol? Yes, get that away. That's your next project. Yowzer. So while it's still a little wet, I am going to go over the lines so that the glue will seep out and it's not going to see that nice gusset. Doesn't that look beautiful? I love, I love the word gusset and I like the look of a gusset on a card. Gives you that little room, you know? It's like having, uh, you know, on a skirt, a uh, stretchy near the zipper on the top, you know? It's, it give you that breathing room so you can eat a little more when you go out for dinner. <laughs> you have your little gusset. Yeah, your stretchy elastic. Oh, I never thought I'd see the day I was buying skirts with stretchy on the top. Ah, oh, yeah. Little gussets, just little gussets. Yeah, that's okay. That happens when you're getting old. Well, when you're aging. Yeah, there's things you have to change up, right? So let's move on to this card. It's nice to have a little chit-chat. I mean, you're spending almost two hours with me. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, I bought uh, pork chops. I'm going to have pork chop dinner after church tomorrow. So um, I'm trying to think of what kind of, you know, whether I should do a crock pot pork chop dinner. Say that ten times. A crock pot pork chop dinner. Yes. Or whether I should just do the standard stuff pork chops with mashed potatoes, gravy, and corn. I love that mixture, don't you? Mm -mm -mm. I'm getting hungry. So here's my tags. Now here's where the creation comes in after I lick my chops. <laughs> Talking about food always <laughs> makes me hungry. Just putting a little bit of double sided or a little bit of runner to hold this in place because I'm using my sewing machine 
Yay! Carol got the sewing machine and I have to remember that there's print on there. It's going the right way. I just took it over to the machine. Wait till you see this stitch. Oh, I love my machine. Yes, it's gorgeous. Look at, look at, look at. I just pressed this button. It's all electronic and look at that beautiful. Oh, I'm just, it's gold thread. And it has a tendency to break if you don't go slow enough on your machine. So I'll show you a picture of my machine. I'm sure you've all seen it. It's been sitting there not used for a few years now just because I was too lazy. Yes, yeah, say it, Carol. Just say it as it is to sit down and keep at it to learn how it has an automatic bobbin, has an automatic threader. You just press this button and it goes boop, boop. And in goes the thread into your uh, needle. I just couldn't get the process of where to run the thread. Now that thing can break a thousand times and I know how to fix it because I stuck to it. I just stuck to it. You know, it's like anything, right? And now I put a little bit of glue right there so it'll dry where I pulled the uh, thread through. And here comes the vintage shabby chic look. I'm trying to think, okay, how am I going to fold this? Just grab um, like a, a card, like motel card, or something that has a nice edge to it. And I have this thingamajig I bought uh, in Port Coburn Craft Store. It's like a uh, styling knife, like a, um, you know, one of your plastic knives, but it's metal and it really bends well. So I just pushed it underneath there and, you know, giving it that shabby, chic, edged look, cutting it. And, oh, I just love it. And then I'm going to have to take some distress inks because I don't want to see any of that white edge. I should have done that before I did this. But as I'm sitting here doing the edit, oh, I'm just like relaxing and looking at that beautiful gold thread. And on my Singer sewing machine, it's one of the anniversary ones, the 150 Singer anniversary machine. And uh, yeah, I did not sew for years. My mother was a beautiful seamstress. And um, yeah, I wish she was here to see all of this. I know she would be so proud. And my sister dinner, did I tell you about my sister dinner last Friday? All four girls, we go out for dinner. Um, my mother will be with the Lord now to be five years, June the 4th. And every month we try to get out for a dinner, the four of us. But it was my mom's birthday, March the 9th, and that was on a Friday. So we all went out to celebrate her birthday. And I was talking about that. We were talking about things we, you know, we have done that, uh, you know, our mom would have been proud of. And this was one of them I mentioned that I wish she had a saw. I actually bought a sewing machine. <laughs> All my sisters sew, and I don't. I never took to it. I never liked it. Um, you know, I would have rather cook or bake, you know, when she taught us to bake and cook. But she tried to get me interested in sewing, but it just didn't take until now. I absolutely love it. So when this singer 150 anniversary electronic sewing machine came out i thought to myself it can't get any easier all you do is it's like it's like an ipad or a, you just press buttons it's all electronic and then you have all these stitches you know it's not like i have to pump it with my foot back and forth back and forth to get a stitch i can actually get all this yumminess look at that isn't it gorgeous i'm just having a chit chat yes i hope you don't mind. oh look I think this is, I don't know, changing up. I don't know if I changed up my nail polish there. But uh, I like to get to know all of my subscribers. I like to have a chit-chat as we're spending this much time. And this set is the Little Bee um, set, I think, of dies. Let's just see. Yeah, Little Bee. You can see the hearts there. One will be a straight and one will have the X's on it. So I have it seated and I'm going to run it through my big book. No, nope, no, nope, it's six and a half by six and a half. So I had to run it through the big wig here. 
and uh, I have to run it in such a way I don't run over my embossing, right, with the embossing folders. So I just go up a little bit, come back, go up the side, come back. I don't want to, yep, just, there you go. That's the other side. That's not the, I'm cutting it so that it doesn't wreck my stitching right there. Yeah, I'm going sideways. I love this uh, Big Shot Plus. Uh, sometimes I've wondered why I got such a big machine when I do love the Vagabond so much because it's electronic. But anyway, I didn't have the, you know, the room to do it, run it through the Vagabond. So I just love that. And yes, I do love the Geminis, uh, but I just can't see me buying one when I have another machine on hand. Yeah, it, it was hard to fight it. I would have liked to have had a uh, Gemini. And, uh, you know, when I broke my wrists a few years back, I had to get the electronic machine. It forced me to get the bag bond when it came out. Yeah, it really forced me. <laughs> you had to twist my wrist, so to speak, even with casts on. But uh, I thought, no, I need a big machine. And that Big Shot Plus worked out perfect for me to get a lot of elements, especially if you do vintage cards, because you don't have, let me measure it here, just a second, I'll get my handy dandy measuring tape for you, just a second here. So I'm digging through all of, well, not all of them, but some of the Spellbinder dies, just to give me, sometimes I like to just stare at them. Um, yeah, I needed a couple of smaller tags. I don't know how those other things got in there, but you only have uh, six inches across on the bag bond. And my card obviously is bigger, six and a half by six and a half. So what I do is I go to my, uh, where I store all my dies and I grab a handful of dies just to see while I'm looking at the vintage card I'm going, that I'm designing, that I'm gonna work on, I just look at them and once again, I have to go back and pick out the colors for the inside of the card. Now, what I want to show you here, now that you have your card and you're going to make a shaker, you're going to need a heart cut out of that piece of cardstock, identical. You can't be off too much because uh, if you are, you're going to see the edges. So I'm going to show you how I do this. So I'm just marking it to be able to cut it down with, uh, you know, my uh, cutter here, my little Tim Holtz cutter, guillotine cutter. And uh, then I'm going to just take the next one and the next one and just give myself a sixteenth of an inch around. Enough so that you can rough out the edges, you know, with your little... Uh, either scissors or your distress tool, whatever. Now, I went around the edges here. Well, I'm going to. I'm not sure if I did already. Yes, I did. I'm cutting the, the all of the thread out and pulling the beautiful gold thread to the back that I'm going to cover. And on this side, I just did a... I'm trying to think. It was a, was it a zigzag stitch or a plain stitch? I have to look at it here. It's a zigzag. I did a zigzag because the tags had that ziggity, you know, the tag look on the bottom with the points. I thought a pointed zigzag stitch. Yes, aren't I amazing? <laughs> the machine's doing it all. I just look at the picture and go, boop, and then it, you know, it starts sewing that whatever design I'm looking at. It's wonderful. So I'm going to tie it in a knot right there and then get it as short as I can. I'll put some uh, glue on that when I put down the paper and look at that. I've got stitch. Oh, don't look at that. Let's ignore my Coca-Cola. I think I'm looking for a straw there <laughs> to put in it. I don't know why I have it right there. But anyway, I put my, um, it's hard to concentrate when I'm looking at myself drinking Coca-Cola. It's terrible. So I took the tags that I wanted to have. I placed them down. You know how we took out some of the centers? Isn't it pretty? You don't waste paper that way. You end up getting more tags uh, out of it if you, you know, do it just right. See my glasses there? You can see my glasses shining. I look at that now. So 
So now I have this hole. Look at the stitching. I'm showing you I have stitching there. And then on the inside, I have stitching. But you know what we have to do right here? I have to put acetate down. I put that beautiful heart that's black up there. Now we haven't put any foil on that yet. It's dry, so we do have to run it through the vagabond. And we do need to keep that embossed. You know, I use an embossing folder, so you want to have the deboss and the emboss just right because we already ran it through. So I'm going to go through the edges with my uh, brown distress ink, whichever one that's dark works well. And could be, it's not antique linen, but it's a darker shade. I can't remember back then. I mean, it took me a week to do this card. Can you believe it? A week. Working every day. I did, you know, I took breaks, obviously, but um, I just, it was another week of uh, relaxation. I've got to stop that. I've got to get a lot more cards up, and I plan on doing that for you. But I wanted to show you all different techniques with this transfer gel that you can use besides using foil. It does so much more. It really does. It's like a cleaning product. It does so much more. And uh, so now we have this, and I have the outward. Remember, we did both sides of the heart. I cut, the, I cut it, like, smaller. So I had the large heart, and then I took this small one out. And I'm thinking, okay, now what? This is how I create it. Just sit there, and I don't know why it's a little foggy. Doesn't it look a little foggy there by the card? I don't know what that is. Or else my glasses I'm looking through is foggy. Um, yeah, maybe I will just... <laughs> Isn't that funny? Let me know. No, I think it is a little foggy there. So right here I'm thinking, okay, I want to have a shaker. So let's get out our gold foil. I'm going to foil this, which is going to take out our emboss right? It is going to flatten it because I'm running it through the make. But hang on because you just have to run it back through your folder, the We Are Memory Keepers beautiful embossing folder. And um, yeah, it'll all be fine. So now we just need to cut some out. And because it has so many elements, you know, so many drawings on it, you don't have to worry whether some of your foil is crinkly or you know, scratched or whatever, it'll all be fine. Obviously, I, you know, wanted to salvage some of it there. But let's move on. I love the colors in that heart to the left. So I'm going to do a close-up. Here's our deboss side of the heart. I'm going to uh, make it, you know, this is what I was thinking here. Oh, I kept this in. I thought it was so funny. Wait till you see this. I thought if I heat set this and I put the foil over top and I rubbed it and rubbed it and rubbed it, watch this, that it would, <laughs> and then I thought, what if I put heat over the foil? Oh yeah, don't do this one. This will not work. I'm helping you because if you're thinking of doing that, look at I took it off, nothing happened. Then I thought, okay, rub it. No, you got a little stripe on the one bird. <laughs> You don't get very much. So I left it in the edit because I thought, you know what? We all create and make mistakes. I do all the time. So now I'm waiting for that number four button to turn green. And then I'm going to run this through the proper way. Yes. You use up so much time when you try to experiment. But, you know, that's what we do. And I thought, boy, if it, you could heat it up with a heat tool, it would save you a lot of time, wouldn't it, to uh, foil over top? I hope I'm not rambling, you know. I just want to show you that some things work and some things don't. And now the emboss that we did is going to be flattened, but we are going to run it back through and it'll pop out again and everything will be cool. So I cut out the little, um, you know, section to put it in, to slide it in, and we're going to run it through number four of the mink. And it doesn't matter whether it's flattened out well because it is a vintage card. It looks so nice, doesn't it? To have the, just to have the option to use the transfer gel on 
an embossing folder, on a stencil, and you're going to see that you can use it on material as well. Yeah, it's awesome. And here's that tool I told you about from Basic Gray. It has, um, I can't remember why I bought this thing. It has a roller on the one end. So I grabbed one of my gift cards and I start trying to get in the grooves of this uh, deboss section and look. It's so funny because the embossing went, you know, almost flat running it through the mink, but it's beautiful because we are going, there it is, look at, oh yeah, I love gold. I love the look of gold and brown. And then you have the opposite side here where we have the hearts and the chip pieces that we cut with our scissors. And now I want the eyes. I'm just making them like you're going to see that, right? <laughs> but I think you will. It's all those little things, the little details that I love. It, I don't know. It makes me happy. It, it's just lovely. And there we're going to run it through the... Uh, we are memory keepers embossing folder again, so all those hearts will pop back up. And now I have to figure out, okay, let's, we have to do a shaker on this side because I have to cover the stitching. As much as I don't want to, we, I'm going to cover it. It does look pretty like that, doesn't it? It doesn't look that bad. You could leave it like that. It was kind of like the edge of the heart that was bothering me there. I wanted to have something go around it. So I'm just looking at it. Yeah, what can I do with this? And a shaker came to mind. But you know what? You have to have a perfect uh, die cut over top, right? You don't want to section your paper. So I'm going to show you what I did here. And I love that stitching on the other side. So there we go. We, that's the back we're looking at now with all that yucky stitching on it. That's the back portion. So I just need to pull it through with a needle and get it all from one side to the next. And we're going to glue that down. Love the, like I said, I love the rose foil on the um, washi tape. That's pretty too, isn't it? And just grabbing all of the threads and pulling it through. This is a nice gold thread for the machine. It really didn't break that many times, even though it's extra fine. It was very pretty and I ended up bundling up a bunch of the thread and putting it on the inside later on so you're going to get a lot of uh, shiny gold also on the uh, design and like I said okay let's go back to like Carol said <laughs> but <laughs> excuse me <laughs> like I said you're getting four card fronts in one I did all four uh, designs to show you different ways to use the transfer gel, different ways to use your sewing machine, and different ways to use uh, different elements to just add some prettiness to your cards. So this is going to be the front of our card here. Now, um, I left this flat. I didn't put this into the embossing folder. I wanted this to be flat. And there you can see the really cute tool I got in Port Coburn at the um, craft store there. And that's for using different gels. It's a beautiful knife. And so we have both sides here. So I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do with this? Um, I'm going to have to make um, a circle, obviously, right? This is going to be for the shaker. So I took my double-sided uh, tape, this is the quarter inch tape, and I'm just bending it and bending it and making it go across there. And then I'm just going to seat it on my acetate that's underneath. And then we're going to have to figure out a way to get the card stock to be perfectly cut uh, so that my shaker element, you know, doesn't have a seam in it in the card base, if that does make sense to you. I hope it does. I think as you see me do it, that's why I left it in. I wanted to show you each stage of my thought process. And uh, it's so funny how it bends so easily. You just squish it down. It doesn't matter if it has creases when you're going around there. Uh, when you take it off, it's perfect. It's perfect, as Popeye would say. Once I have the double-sided tape on there, I turn the heart around and I put it down onto the acetate. So you're going to put 
you're going to take off the pieces parts on the outside now we're working on the outside of the back side so I have the heart seated on the um, like pushed like you know put into that heart form that we die cut I'm taking the double-sided tape out you're gonna see why this comes together like this in a second so once on the opposite side I put that heart in I took off the double-sided tape we need to put the acetate down on top of this then we need to cut around it just the acetate part we don't need a full sheet of it we just need to place it now on the sticky and then turn it over and you know what I did here I have to take this off I had put this outside edge on too soon because underneath here I am going to need another piece of acetate on the front I'm going to need one on the back and one on the front because it's going to be a shaker and I don't want my heart to fall out right because once you set that heart in there there's nothing holding it from falling forward and coming out of the card so I got a little ahead of myself so what I'm going to do now is stick it down again I'm going to put more double-sided tape on here on the black portion I'm going to go all the way around then I'm going to put it onto the acetate and I'll show you what we do here and I hope it makes sense because when you have a when you die cut straight from the six and a half by six and a half inch piece and you go through all those layers you're going through four layers um, it would just fall out right if I didn't have acetate underneath that heart so now I'll stick it right down because I want this to show on the other side and then we're just going to cut around it so that you don't see the acetate yes and now it's raining gold because I'm so happy so there we have our piece let's put it in there and now we're going to have this piece on there but you can see I already have the acetate on I cut around it making sure that all the edges are nice but we're going to have to add more double-sided tape right because that other tape just held the acetate down Whew. I do hope this is making sense to you um, it did while I was creating it <laughs> it made sense to me but so now you have the heart and then you have the double-sided tape and then I stuck it to the acetate and so now I need to stick the acetate and the heart onto the front so that my heart piece doesn't fall forward and fall out that's all I'm saying you need to have it just precisely cut around the outside edge of the heart put more double-sided tape on and let's get that acetate piece on the front all right here's the section if you're going to make a shaker I need to have the outside element cut perfect so there you have it it's cut six and a half by six and a half now I need to cut my acetate exact so I held on to it and I cut it six and a half by six and a half right there you just need to do it with your scissors cut around it so you have the black sheet which is going to be my background by the way and then my acetate piece so this is how I'm going to know how to cut it properly I'll put the acetate over top of the heart I'll show you how I'm going to get a perfect cut so I'm going to put the acetate down right like this and hold it yeah now you could uh, tape it right here see how you need to just slide I'm just putting marks on it yeah and then I'm going to put some little glue there to hold it and I'm going to mark it with the heart die I'll just show you here I take out the piece yeah I'm getting serious here it's another day yes we're on to blue nail polish now uh, so then you're going to put the die cut right there not that one Carol you're not going to cut into it just hang, hang with me here I'm figuring it out I'm going to put that big piece right there over top of the acetate now you're going to put some micropore tape down oh yes this is how we're going to get that perfect heart cut into my um, black piece now you take it off just like that inside and outside now you seat it down right like that perfect because we cut it perfectly right the acetate's the same size as the black paper 
run it through your die cut. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I needed some diversion because I I'm so I'm probably so confusing you. I had to have the my little spanky dog walk across there. That's funny. So now look it. Now we're going to have. Believe it or not, this is going to work. So we're going to have the heart section that we cut out. We have the acetate piece that I have in my hand right there. I'm kind of just trying to show you. Then take it off, Carol, right there. Yeah, flip that across. Let's get going with this. Now take, this is another way I'm going to show you. I put the die on there and now just feel around. Make an emboss on there with your hands. That way you know where to seat it, uh, to die cut it perfectly. This, you don't have to cut it out six and a half by six and a half. You just mark the upper portion of the heart and the lower. So you know where to start and where to stop. And you have a perfect uh, raise in there to set your die when you cut it. Watch, right like that. And there you have it. And then you can cut around the black portion and you'll have a perfect die cut around the back of your card. So that was two ways. You could use the acetate as a uh, as a die, um, you know, for your eye to see it as your frame. Or you can do it this way, where you just emboss it with your hand and cut it out. And it works out perfect. Now all you have to do, you've got the heart in the right place. You set it in there. Oh yeah, it's raining hearts here. Gold hearts. Now set it down and cut around the edges. Perfect. You're going to have to turn that over there, Carol. Turn it over. Put your micro-pore tape down. Turn your whole card over. Get a pair, or get your pencil, draw it out, and cut her off. And this way, you get to distress the edges, and it's easy-peasy from here on in. I just cut it off on the pencil line, and you have a perfect backing for a shaker. So either way, the first way, which was a little hard for me to explain, I think, but this way, all you had to do was, you know, force your hand down and make the bump in the heart and then set your die on top of that little bump and die cut it without cutting around, turn it over and look at that. Yep, it's done. That's it. So I'm going to mark the places where I need to take a little piece off. It was just a little too short. Or, I'm sorry, I needed to make it a little shorter right there because I wanted some of the washi tape to show. And it's perfect. Look at that. You have yourself a beautiful shaker element and you have the die cut, cut out on there. Yeah, I was going to use that piece of the acetate that said forget it. And there you go. We're going to move on. Yes, that's our shaker. So you know we're going to have to put shaker pieces in there. I already uh, embossed it so that the hearts are all bumpy on this side. And there you go. Because we put the, um, uh, we did the uh, washi tape and we added the gusset, it'll fold nicely with the shaker. So I want to use some of the stencil, some of that transfer gel on the outside of the black because I'm going to foil it. Wait till you see it. That's obviously a 6x6 six six, uh, stencil. And that came in a kit by Catherine Pooler. It's one of her kits um, that I used here. I'll leave the name of it if you um, are interested. I think you can buy it over at Catherine's shop separately from the kit and I'm going to take it off and going to add some to the other side carefully. There we go and some on the top. Now as you can see as I lifted this I'm leaving it in there because nothing because not because nothing is perfect. I you know when I pulled it off it smeared a bit, but that's okay. It's vintage and it can smear all at once because at the end, when I, I'm going to cover it up with flowers. Oh, yeah. This card has everything, doesn't it? Oh. We're going to work on the shaker portion. I just wanted to make sure after doing all of this playing around with all the elements 
that the gusset was right and it ended up yeah I'm getting back in my chair and we're going to work on the shaker element now it's so funny because this is upside down right but that's okay we're going to need to have some uh, this is the roll of the scotch tape because I'm going because I'm going to raise it up two times not just this once I ended up I thought okay Carol we are just going to do a slight raise up, not too high. You know how I always say this is too high? But I'll show you why I did what I did. I took both sides of the, um, the outer pieces of the roll, right? That, like the paper off, because it's easier to manipulate around the heart when you don't have that paper on it. I'm just going over to my computer and... Uh, shutting it down there. I must have been listening to something and thought I better concentrate. <laughs> so I took the paper off the scotch roll tape. I cut it very thin, very thin around the edges. I wanted to get it to go as much around that heart without having pieces parts cut off because you'll be able to see that on the sides from looking in. And then right here I'm thinking, okay, I think I'm going to have to have it a little higher, but uh, I'll work on that. Isn't that nice right there? So I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to put in there? Oh yeah, hearts of course. This is like heart city, this card, or should I say cards up? And uh, yeah, so I cut another thin, thin piece to go on top of this. And you know what I should have done? I should have just folded it in half and then cut it thin. That was my hand clapping. You should have just folded it in half. And that's what, if you do this, that's what you do. You don't have to do this twice. Just, you know, take that roll, fold it on each other, then take off the paper and do it all at once. But I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to be, you know, double the size in height. See, I didn't say too high. <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted it too high. But as I got to look at it, I thought, no, you're going to need it to be, especially with shaker pieces. And then I wanted to have black little hearts in there. I know, I know. It's like, really, Carol, do you need to add all this to one card? Not really, but... I think it's fun. I wanted to show you what I came up with with the transfer gel, what you could do with it, and I think you're really going to like the idea. Here, using this double-sided tape like this, you're able to make a perfect line over top of your washi tape. So everything looks kind of uniform, which you don't have to have because it is vintage, but I strive to have it, um, you know, as orderly as possible. You know, so it's not all slanted. And here I am just filling it all in, trying to get so there's no parts left undone. And uh, we're going to do this twice, right? So I'm filling it in. And because it had pieces, parts, I really couldn't um, do it. Well, I guess I could have folded it in half again. Why do we forget these things while we're creating? We forget all the, I do, all of the short cuts that we could use until after it's too late but then I explain it to you and uh, you could fold yours there we go I'm gonna put this over top what am I doing here I have no idea whatever it was um, oh I'm getting out my gold and my silver little hearts out of this shaker I get this at Michaels you have four or five sections of wonderful sparkleness and this is silver and gold hearts. Yeah, so pretty. But like I said, I had to have black hearts. So how am I going to get black hearts when I don't have black hearts? I'm going to show you how I do this. That's probably what I'm thinking about here. I want to add some black hearts. And remember that I put it through the embossing folder again so that the big gold hearts were raised up. So all of these hearts are going to fall in between the embossed hearts. I hope it makes sense. I'm kind of looking at it here, and I think what's really funny 
as I'm doing the voiceover, I think I had to take it all out to do the next, uh, yeah, let's wait and see. I'm not too sure here, but I'm watching it like you're watching it. I'm trying to see how I can take as much out as possible for you so you don't have to sit through an hour and a half worth of a card video, you know. But uh, I wanted to just show you a lot of elements with transfer gel, like a lot of things to do with it. And uh, yeah, so here you have the cover and it's beautiful. And I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, I'm thinking along with you. Okay, I've got it covered. I've got all the goodness in there. Yep, shaking it up. Whenever I really have to think, I start tapping all my fingers. Yeah, what am I going to do here? And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it for a while. <laughs> Look what I did. I opened it up forgetting I don't have acetate on top of it. Oh, yes, it was fun. I don't mind this stuff. Like, I don't mind. You know, these things happen. Just pick it out, clean it up. There you go. And start again. That's the fun of it, isn't it? Like, if you're going to do a vintage card, you're not going to get perfection. I don't think so. I, 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 st I don't even strive for perfection. I just strive for prettiness. That it, you know, it all makes sense in the end. That's all you have to worry about. Don't get stressed out over little things. It really isn't worth it. And here you go. I just thought, okay, put all of those pieces, parts in a little jar, a little bowl, and move on. Let's do the back. Let's do something while my brain is working, trying to figure out, you know, how I'm going to do the shaker portion. And let's just stare at it together. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm back. Oh, I had to let that dry, too. So I have the one end here, the black end. And then I'm looking at it again. I do, Carol, you're going... And I... <laughs> Sorry. I know exactly what I'm thinking here. I'm thinking, oh, just leave that, Carol. Go, go and distress the edges. Go take your mind off of it for now. Just go back and vintage out the, the other side while your brain is trying to figure out what you're going to do on that side. That's the beauty of, you know crafting and having time to figure things out. I always try to do elements that uh, you would like while I'm creating. I mean, you know, that's why I have a channel, right? I want to share some of the ideas I come up with and some, you know, nothing's new under the sun. Like I always say, we've all, we've either seen it on another video in time past or pictures or whatever. But uh, if I've thought of, if I thought, that it was something I thought up. I would say that. Oh, I think I thought this up, but seldom do I think things up. It's always, you know, in the back of your mind. I put my gut pieces back in that, you know, I collected from that mass. I don't know if I make another one here. I'm trying to think, okay, there's something, something's missing, Carol. And you know what it is? The acetate. Don't put that down without putting your acetate on there. <laughs> Yeah. So, anywho, yeah, turn it around. Let's see what we're going to do here. Yes. Don't get another piece of, look at, I'm working with that. Yeah, lay that aside, Carol. You're not going to work with that. Let's move on. Come on, come on. I could put this in fast forward, but I thought, you're going to just endure this with me while I'm just sitting here going, mm -hmm, what's missing? Plus, we have to foil the outside of this, right? Let's not forget that. We have the transfer foil, gel on there to foil. And then I have the outer piece just plain without doing anything to that black heart right there. And, oops, get that off. And now let's see. Grab my scissors. What are you going to do there, Carol? I don't know. I think I should speed this up. I don't know about you, but uh, isn't it funny? Look, at the, look what I worry about right there like a teensy-weensy little piece of tape. Oh, yes. I don't know how you're doing it, but thank you. Thank you for staying with me on this one. Um, I might have to go get some more chocolate milk because just watching it here is making me thirsty. Okay, speed it up. There you go. I did it again. <laughs> oh, yeah, I kept it in there. Okay, put it back in, Carol. Put it back in. Okay. 
You didn't have acetate on there. I don't know what you're thinking, Carol. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. What are you thinking, Carol? Yeah, tap it all in there. Whew. Okay, let's get let's get going. Let's do it again. Now, I think this is where I realize, okay, how am I go oh what am I doing here? How are you going to get um hearts, black hearts? Well, first of all, let's do this. I'm going to foil both of these. I'm going to use this delicious, uh, it reminds me of um, opal. I don't know if it's called opal. Uh, no, Carol, no, 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 no. Get back, you don't have that side up. Oh, yeah, I'm watching myself, you know. You have to have the shiny side up when you do this foil. All right, run it through the mink. You can fast forward my videos, that's the beauty, right? Once I get kind of off into La La Land, just forward me and go to the end. And that way it'll eliminate all of this stress. <laughs> yeah, I do love my mink. It's so nice to have on hand, isn't it, when you want to do a project like this. And you have the transfer gel and you didn't have to have uh, foil. Um, we have snow here. My husband just went for a Harley ride. It's like seven degrees. Okay, it's freezing out there with snow and he, the sun is shining. He has a heated seat and heated grips. So he thought, you know, he can go out on a day like this. I'm not going out on a day like this. Woof, no, I'm waiting. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I just heard him coming in the lane. So I thought if you can hear that, that's what it is. So I took out my wonderful Falling Hearts die. I used black cardstock. I'm just picking the pieces, parts, all the little gut hearts out. And that's what we're going to use in our shaker. Yes. And not only that, I have a beautiful piece for another, for another project. Yes, not fur. It's for. Mm -hmm. Now get my little milk glass container there. Put all my little hearts of every size. And I'm so happy because now I have... Uh, an element. I run this through so I think I have two of them. I could put them inside the die and use it for another uh, project and I can use it as a stencil, right? So now it is actually Monday morning. I have never seen a voiceover edit take so long in my life. I apologize for that. Just seems that every day, yes, I'm just uh, trying to answer things. Oh my, I need to stick to one thing, don't I? So I have all the pieces, parts, the glittery hearts in gold and silver and the black hearts from the stencil. I'm gonna remove the double-sided tape and we're going to get rolling on getting this video up. And I do have some wonderful cards coming up and a wonderful announcement that I wanna make that I'll do right after this tutorial. And thank you so much for your patience with me when I go to put my videos up. Last week, it was just one of those things when you work on a four-sided card, it does take a little bit and you're always so very, very kind to me in waiting. So here's what we're going to do. I have everything on there, but I only want to cut around uh, just barely outside the heart with the acetate to keep the guts and pieces parts inside. And this is the way that I thought would be easiest. Just take the double-sided tape off your project, put your acetate down, and then cut it because it isn't going to stick right away. You are going to have some wiggle room, so it's going to work out very nicely. And I, when this project was completed, I'm looking at it here to the left, and it actually is a very nice card uh, to mail out. Uh, the two hearts that I had left over, I'm going to make an envelope today and this card will go out to one of my subscribers as a gift. So when you comment, I will get back to you and you can send me your address and this will be in the mail to you. You know I do that uh, off and on by the month. I just uh, pick somebody at random, ask for you to email me and then I send you out the project. So this one will be no different. So here we go. Um, lots of elements. You know when you do a technique card, you really 
uh, are at the mercy of people waiting at the other end that enjoy watching your tutorials. I feel just as bad. And I have to tell you, remember like earlier on in my videos, I would edit in the evening. And I like that because I had all of my equipment in another room. But now that I have my, my craft room in an open space, there's no door going down the stairs. So anything that goes on after the supper, you can hear everything downstairs. So I can hear my hubby. <laughs> I can hear the television or I can hear company or whatever else is going on. And because my Apple computer, the, the big one, is on the island. And all of my external hard drives are now connected to it. So the only time I can get my edits done is during the day. Uh, I can edit, excuse me, in the night. But anyway, I can't do the voiceover in the evenings until I get it figured out. I am going to get it figured out on how I can do that so it will speed up the process. So in my stash, uh, you know I buy up bridal gowns for the beadwork and I had this headpiece and this worked out lovely. It had the gold, it had these tiny little pearls, large pearls and the glass beads. I want to cover up the heart, half of the heart. So when you open up the card, it's not so, oh, that is upside down. <laughs> it will look like a, uh, on purpose, element and this video truly was just to show different ways to use the transfer gel and I thought what better way than to do all four sides of the card and show you different ways on each side. So I took the Tim Holtz beautiful uh, cloth flowers apart. I'm taking the stamens out of the middle and we're going to set that aside. I didn't want the bumps when it went through my uh, mink and while I was yakking there, I was putting the black uh, double-sided dimensionals around the heart. I was cutting them in half. They're like that honeycomb shape, like the Stampin' Up! ones, but black. It's from the Sticky Stuff store. And it's nice to have black dimensionals sometimes. You know, on the side, you don't see the white. You're going to see black. So I was taking those, cutting them off, and putting them around the heart so I can seed it later. And once all the statements, I will save those because they'll probably be good for another project, I'm sure. But I just wanted to take my uh, plastic paper, put all of this inside so that I could get a little paintbrush and paint on the deco foil transfer gel on each of the flowers. And we will be able to get silver, uh, red, blue, gold, whatever color that you have your foil in we can add it to paper projects. Isn't that awesome? So you're really not uh, limited to doing just die cuts on your paper that has a laser, black laser ink on it. Now we can move forward and put the gel on just about anything and have beautiful shine on the elements. So the first thing I want to do is take some of my um, Glad peel and stick, I think it's called here, press and seal, excuse me. I'm going to lay it out and this is what's going to make my little flowers not go all over the place right here. So we'll seed it down. I'm going to need it to paint on the uh, gel and I didn't want them moving around and I certainly didn't want to hold them <laughs> in the palm of my hand while I did that. Wouldn't that be a hoot? Yes, so this works out well. It's nice to have this um, cut and seal is what I always want to call it. Let me see, press and seal. It's right behind me. I just took a look. And it helps hold things. And it also helps you pick up things. And it helps for placement. So this has a lot of, you know, goodness to it as well when doing projects. As I was taking out the gel and I was putting it on these flowers, I was thinking I'm going to need some bigger elements, you know, like leaves and larger flowers out of uh, paper. I thought that would be kind of nice. And I was reminded about my Bigs dies. How sweet is that? You have, I have all of these Bigs dies with flowers and different shaped leaves. So I ran over into this basket I had and I took it out and kind of put it on display as a basket of dyes out in the open because, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Isn't that so true? And I used two of them to get these 
Go ahead, just leaves and some flowers instantly. We're going to put some gel on those and instant foiling. You know what I like about the large elements? More so than the small ones. You can put all different colors, like cut your foil and do each leaf a different foil color. There's like endless possibilities. Uh, so anyway, that's what I did. And I thought it was kind of nice. And just remember that the paintbrush you use, you want to put aside so that you always use it for the mixed media, you know, for this gel, the transfer gel. You don't use it for anything else because it is, you know, wash it all off and designate it for just the gel. And um, yeah, so that's what I did. I just went around and on this, I did a little bit of heat setting, set it aside, and then I came back to put it in my um, envelope. That's what I'm going to call that. Uh, it's kind of like, it's not acetate, but you know the folded sheet for your mink that you put everything in to slide it through. Right there, that thing. And I like it because you can cut them down. You don't have to have the crease, excuse me. You don't have to have the crease, you know, always there. You can cut it in just uh, pieces, parts, and use it to run through the, your, you know, your mink. Yeah, I'm getting all confused here as I'm watching this and I'm making sure that <laughs> they're on the side that has the gel. Yeah, wouldn't that be a hoot? But you just have to go through and do it again, which I didn't want to do, but if I had to, that's fine too. And I'm setting it all out and then we're going to put the beautiful foil on top. Whatever colors you have, it's great. I thought I would do it silver and gold, I think, as I'm looking at this. Yeah, I did half gold right here I guess the fold, the fold in that um, kind of acetate sheet is nice to butt up against it when you're using color. So there you go. I just ripped it off, not caring what was on the other side. And then I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to use? And I love this foil, this kind of opal stripe thing with all of the colors behind it. It's so crazy pretty. Reminds me of an opal. So I did half of that, and then we're gonna close it up. I'm gonna get the mink machine. And it's really funny because I was using it on top of the island before, but then as you get towards the end of your project, I just put it on the floor. <laughs> my mink machine, that is. Yeah, right beside me, and I just hopped off my chair, ran it through, unplugged it, wait for it to cool, and put it away. Mm -hmm. There it is, yeah, I'm back, see? <laughs> I jump back up in the chair and look at that. Oh, sheer gorgeousness, I tell you. And it's so pretty. Yeah. So I got out my oh, my diamond -y ring with all the same kind of flowers on it. See that on the right hand? Oh, yeah. It makes you happy in your craft room. You have to do what makes you happy, right? Just kind of matchy-matchy my nail polish or my jewelry or whatever. Uh, it's kind of fun. And it's... All of my play jewelry from either secondhand stores or Value Village or wherever else I find it. It's kind of like my play YouTube jewelry. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, so that's kind of fun too. Breaks up the day, right? So we're covering it and running it back through and we're just about finished, my friends. Can you believe it? But I have to have some more elements. So I went back to the gorgeous papers, the 8x8 papers, and I love this sheet. It had some little tags, but it had these little hearts I wanted. It's all about the detail with me, right? It's these little hearts, and it had a little bow tied with the exact color of the papers that were used, because I used the same papers, obviously. But see the little bow in the upper left corner? Things like that just delight me for some reason. I just, when I find a little nugget like that and uh, it adds some yumminess to your card, why not? Just cut it out and go with it. Now, oh yes, I'm showing you these Prima paints. You know the ones that are two colors? It's one color on black cardstock, which is the gold up there. But when you put it on here, it's pink. Isn't that something with these Prima paints? I'll link them because you'll just love them. You, you get two colors out of one jar, pink, opal, and then pure gold. That's what it is on the heart, just pure gold. I love that. So you can use both 
colors of cardstock, the black and the white, and one jar and get two yummy colors. I think it's wonderful. So I'm filling in every other of the ovals here. So pretty, isn't it? I wanted to keep a lot of this little stuff in there to show you when you make mistakes, show you how to cover up things, and uh, spend some time together. I mean, an hour and a half. <laughs> People must look at it and panic. Ah! Wow, what's that woman thinking? But see all of that that slipped when I did the gel, like when I ran it through the mink? And you have that blurry section that I want to cover up, you know? I mean, with mixed media, it doesn't matter in retrospect. But uh, see my bracelet there, the blue one? My daughter-in-law made me that. Isn't that pretty? I had to wear it. It's just it's made out of square beads. And uh, yeah, she's really good at bead making. And I said, I'm going to wear that today. So thank you very much, Tanya. Beautiful. Now let's get back to this. We have the gold and the silver, and I love the way that it, on the material, it takes to some of the material, and some of it it doesn't. So you have this real shabby chicness happening. And then I want to cover up the, uh, the reason for this. Now let's get back to that. See all the yummy uh, shaker bits in there? The reason for this, A, because it slipped on the left side, and I wanted to cover that, but mainly because when you open it up, the heart's upside down. So I want to take away from that visually. So I thought, okay, what, what, and it's all flat elements, only the bead work and they're tiny beads has a little bit of lift to them, but mostly it's a, they're flat elements. And I thought just going around that one side of the heart, see that? I think it looks very pretty. That alone for the front of a card is beautiful, I think. Not because I did it, just because it's it has all different elements. You're using that transfer gel in so many ways here. You know, you have some of it in your shaker bits. You have it on the inside with the embossed heart. We are memory keepers folder. So all those bits go all the way around the hearts that are painted with uh, beautiful glitter. Um, it's fabulous. Like, uh, it's really shiny too, isn't it? Look at it there. <laughs> but I kept it in because it's just, it has like an elegant feel. I think it would really make a nice wedding card, um, friendship card, because you have that heart. And uh, yeah, so that's how, that's what I did to cover up the little mess of slipping on the side. Oh yeah, I'm getting right into it. I had to backtrack and put hot glue to hold the pearls down. And you don't want to cover too much of your heart when you do this because you do want to see the elements that are inside, of course. But the silver and gold and the gel on the material, uh, Tim Holtz flowers, I think is very pretty. So let's move on. This is the front. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with these two hearts that I had left over there. So I set them there for a while, but wait till you see what I, I use them for. I already told you, didn't I? An envelope, yes. And it's really pretty too. Yeah, I think you're gonna like it. So I'll show it in an upcoming video. And once you're satisfied with everything that you put on here, and just looking around your stash, you can find different elements. This is twisted gold wire that's holding the beads on this, uh, these, uh, the wire work that was on the headband that I took off. So it all intertwines in with the gold and silver. So I think that's very pretty. And it would look really nice too if you did it right side up. <laughs> so you had a heart that looked like a shaker heart, but I didn't and I wanted to use a lot of elements. And one of them was this uh, scratchy heart. Look at the look of that with the foil because you get the gel with the paintbrush, you get the paintbrush layers on it. See how like every time you went to brush it, you get this beautiful fiber look. And then when you run it through the mink, I'm doing a close up to show you the little pieces, parts inside the shaker and see how the gold hearts are embossed and they're sticking way up. 
And then you have the front element with the birds. We use the transfer gel on those. And all we have left is the mess there on the back to cover up. I think it's awesome. And you've used the, you get to use some of your washi tape on the top when you put your gusset uh, in there. And now I'm trying to decide, okay, what are you going to do? So, of course, I went to the Tim Holtz 12 by 12 papers because it had that bird. And I have the gold birds on the front. And now I'm going to add it to the back. You can't get any more mixed media vintage than this, can you? It's so pretty. It just matches everything. So I'm going to cut that. I just kind of bend it over here so I know how much room I need to have. Take my Fiskars cutter, cut it off. I'm going to distress the edges. And then I thought I have to add some dimension to that bird. And all you do is take your little cutting knife, any cutting knife that you have, and cut into the bird paper. But you have to put the paper down first so that you have something underneath, you know, to give you some stability. So I opened it up so that, uh, you know, it wouldn't slide on me and I wouldn't, on the inside, flatten out those wonderful uh, embossed hearts that I have raised up in the shaker. And I'm going to distress the edges. And I think you're really going to like it. If you want dimension and you want feathers on, like say a bird, to stand out, just take a cutting knife and cut down all the feathers really close together. So here I'm just distressing the edges and I really did like the effect of this. I've done it on uh, other mixed media pieces. So I was reminded once again to add that I didn't have another piece of paper. I would have cut out another bird and raised it up to give it some dimension, but I think this worked just as well. And uh, now I'm just cutting little pieces of the thread that I had sticking out past there, you know, making it look kind of even. And then I'm still worried about these two hearts. <laughs> you know what I was going to do? I was going to make a pocket and I was going to slide it down into the bird there. And then I cut it on top of the bird. This is what brought the memory back of slicing it. I cut it and I thought, okay, what if I do it so I can put a gift card in there? And uh, it's already been uh, seated with uh, double-sided tape. So yeah, I have to be so careful. And I could not get enough space in there as I'm ripping it apart to get this these hearts. But it'll give you some inspiration if you want to do something like that. But I just thought it took away from the paper, so I set them aside and said, okay, I'll worry about you later. And I'm sitting up thinking, all right, let's go around the bird with my little Fiskars handheld cutter, cutting knife. And I just start slicing, tons of little slices. Now, you don't want to slice it off, but you do want to put a lot of them in there. And then when you grab your Distress tool to put the ink on, it's going to raise, you know, it's going to give you little edges and it's going to be really cute. It seems to be all about the dimension, right? You want to have each side. I mean, if you've done tons of elements on other pages, it doesn't hurt to do a little extra on the uh, back side of this card. Now I'm putting some of the um, Tim Holtz Distress ink, trying to lift some of the cuts. I'm going to get right close up there. See how I'm doing that? Lots of little sliver pieces. Just take it off. Uh, in my case, I wanted to hold it down. I guess I didn't want it off too much. But doesn't that look like the feathers are actual feathers? I'm kind of scraping it and having some really fun, vintage, distress moments here. Isn't it? I really like that, you know? Uh, when we're creating all of these extra thoughts and I did take some of the gold um, thread and I put it on the inside there I bundled it up just in case you miss it on the heart part I was trying to cover up with the pearls and the uh, other elements there I did put some bundled thread there so you probably see it in the pictures I'm adding some nouveau glaze to the outside of this piece so you have this is the piece that's just reversed from where we die cut on the inside heart. I just turned it over 
and you have the gold foil hearts. Oh, just heart heaven right there. And those, yes. I was going to make the envelope right now, like as I was thinking of this, and I thought, no, Carol, don't do that. Just move on. <laughs> An hour and a half is enough, right? It's enough. I'm trying to get close up here. I slowed it down here in the next segment so that you could see there's the gold thread. Isn't that pretty? Just took it right off the machine roll, made a uh, there's the heart there with the bow. Here's all my straight stitching I'm showing you. It's amazing because I've had this sewing machine so long and everybody knows that I haven't used it because I didn't want to learn how to use the automatic threading and the bobbin. But I know now, oh yeah, everything's a learning curve. And uh, yeah, what do I do with those hearts? Hmm, yeah, that's the guts that were from that piece. That's what I'm showing you. And underneath it, uh, you could also do this. That's what I was showing you. You could have a sentiment going across there if you want. And I may, you know, just include that one piece in the envelope when I send it off. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, here you have it. I'm grabbing some Nouveau. Oh, yeah. I'm turning on another light. <laughs> I did this afterwards. This was an afterthought. And I thought I'm going to put it in. Look at Yes, I'm so proud of myself to use my sewing machine. And yeah, this is slowed down version of hiding all my little mistakes with that. There's the little feathers uh, just cut from your cutting knife. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, just these little elements. There, uh, the tags that we use, the little heart we fussy cut out. It's all about the hearts today. And it's all about the transfer gel. How many ideas you can think up using it. Now I'm going to put three little circles with my new bow, and that color is really pretty. I think it's called Antique Rose, if I'm right. Nope. Yeah, Antique Rose. That's the color I'm using on this, and I stuck with just those Nouveau drops. I thought it'd be nice. Three there and three down in the other corner, and just some little details that I just can't let go. <laughs> Yeah, just on opposite corners, that's what I'm showing you there. And thank you very much for joining me as we take a look at all four sides. I hope you were able to glean some inspiration for using the Deco Foil Transfer Gel. And if you stuck with this hour and 35 minute video out with me, it was nice to spend this time. I appreciate it. Thank you for your likes, subscribing. Thank you so much. And for your comments, they mean a lot to me. There it is. I'm showing you the color close up. Almost like a cocoa, isn't it? So you have yourself a blessed week. I'm on to some more card creating and getting them up on YouTube. And I can't wait to share some exciting news with you. Enjoy the pictures and I will see you on the next tutorial. Thank you so much. And there's my washi tape. <laughs> Take care, my friends.